this is not working. I know you've served hundreds, maybe even thousands of people in the past, and they were very happy with what you do. That's why I chose you. I believed in you. It's just that you and me, we don't connect. Or maybe I'm just not the right fit for you. Because obviously you're successful, but you, you, you just don't cut it for me. So I think it's time for us to move on. And yes, <laughs> I found someone else. Do you, do you understand? Great, I know you understand. I wish you good luck. Hi everybody, my name is Lena Smell and welcome to my channel. So for the last two seasons, I've been trying my hand on using a soil blocker, a mini soil blocker. I tried using this because I was curious. Lisa Mason Ziegler recommended that we, we try this. One good thing about soil blocking is that you don't have to spend money on the planting cells because you just use the soil as it is. Make a soil block, plant the seeds, let the seed grow, and then just plop it into the ground. And you don't have to wash and make sure that your cell seed cells are clean. First year I used this was a fail. They didn't they didn't really I mean they germinated, but they didn't really grow into a seed that you could transplant confidently. I mean for the most part they did grow, just it took longer. And I attributed it to the fact that I used coco coir instead of or coir, coco coir instead of peat moss. So this year I tried using peat moss instead of coco coir. And I didn't really get a better result either. So I tried my hand on a bigger one. So I got the mini five so you get uh, an inch and a half per square so um, with this blocker you get five squares so this will fit 72 in a 10 by 20 seed tray so it's about equivalent as those um, 72 cells seed trays so i tried this and i really enjoyed using it i mean I enjoyed the results that I got. The plants were healthier, the roots were bigger, and you get bigger transplant because you got more soil to store the nutrients for the plant's root to grow. So seeing the results of good seedlings from using the 1.5 inch soil blocks, I was kind of bummed that I just couldn't figure out how to use this mini thing because Using these soil blocks, you can fit 200 in a 10 by 10, 20 tray, and that would save a lot of space in my grow room. I just wish you and I worked. One thing about the mini 20 soil blocks is that it's a pain to put to make make soil blocks out of these. You need it has to be the proper consistency. It can't be too wet, can't be too dry. Otherwise, you won't get the right. So it takes a while to figure it out. And even though, even when you figure it out, you still have to worry about keeping the, the blocks moist for the seeds to germinate and thrive to become seedlings that you can transplant outside eventually. But then I heard of a new company called Swift Blocker and they've revolutionized the way we do soil blocking. Let me show you. So this, is a swift blocker i got the um the 72 no this has the mini swift blocker 75 75 cell trays in a mini size block but the thing is with these blocks they're twice as big the, the holes or the volume is twice as much as the mini blocker ones. Maybe I should show that. See the difference right there? Okay. 
are slightly bigger so you can tell you can see the difference right there they said twice the volume and they're probably right anyway this is my soil mix um, I'm hoping that's enough to fit here uh, let me just um, moisten it up before I just to make sure that everything fits or that everything goes like it should if you're following Laura from Garden Answer how she wets her soil before putting soil into the sea tray that's pretty much the same idea here you want the soil to be moist but not too moist probably don't probably will need to add more soil to this I don't think this will fit I don't think this will be enough eh, let me just try anyway at least so you show you the gist so Yeah. So I have this um no, I just found it at my husband's tools, so Swift Blocker has its own um, tool that they use to like scrape the wet soil into the blocks, but uh don't remember how much that is, but this this will work. Oh and that one too doubles as a feeder which is convenient if you see directly into your um, to your swift blocks better if you ha if you have a tray that's flat but I, I don't have anything on hand right now so I'm just using um, one of the bootstrap farmers microgreens tray and just make sure you I mean this soil is sifted before using it like with any other type of soil blocking tool just so it doesn't get stuck when you try to press the two together and Like Laura, she likes to like press down. Just to make sure that everything gets packed, every little cell gets packed. And also this way you can tell whether there's a stick there or not. And if there's a stick there, then you take it away. And once you've done that, just add more soil and it should be enough to flatten it. Just trying to cram as many as much soil as I can. Another good thing I learned about using Swift Blocks, I keep used to saying Swift Blocks, they're like a brand now to me. Using Soil Blocks is that if, if they only take a seedlings take about a third less than what they will take. Seedlings will take one third less time than when they are to be ready for transplant and when I, they are seeded the traditional way. So for seeds that need 12 weeks prior to the last frost, then a third of that 
would be 4 weeks. So 12 minus 4 is 8. So instead of 12 weeks, you need just 8 weeks to germinate the seed and transplant successfully. Because with soil blocks, oxygen is readily available to the roots, which helps them multiply, which helps their cells, root cells to multiply and get bigger. The bigger the root, the more nutrients the plant can take, and it means bigger veg vegetative growth. It's usually towards the end that um, made more tactical. And I just do this just so I can see the delineation of each cell, which makes it easier for them to be divided when it's time. And it also allows um, clear channels or the water when you eventually have to water the seedlings. Alright, so that's good. And you put it on top like that. Before that, I'll need to get my tray ready first. We'll take this up now, right over here. I got this tray from Amazon. It's a 15.7, well, 15 and a quarter inch by 6.5 inches, I believe. It's, it's quite sturdy. And with that, I'm going to use a um, form of a wicking mat. It's actually just a... Uh, I forget. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's what you use to wipe cars as a, when you're in a shop. But it, it absorbs water. And it's um, it's thick enough material that when the roots grow, the roots doesn't get stuck. The same. That's how I've been finding using fleas or capillary mat. This one is pretty much plastic, almost less. This one's quite sturdy, so no roots are gonna go through there. Just put it like that. Okay. And then you just move it in there. Just like that. And then just press together two ends. This one. Not bad. Those one tends to happen. Um, so I just use some two bamboo sticks and just treat it like sushi or something. It's mainly because the this thing the tray I use to make the swift blocker is not flat. That's why its bottom is not completely flat in some of these, so they'll, they'll tend to topple. But yeah, 75 little seed cells ready for me to put seeds on. Whoop. Looks good, eh? This is my current, uh, what's currently growing in my grow room right now. So, in the past, if I use the 1.5 inch soil blocks, the mini 5 soil blocks, I can fit 72 in one 10 by 20 tray and I can fit two trays in one 
and half of the shelf. So 300, no, 150 in one shelf. And if you put them side by side, it'll be 300 seedlings in one shelf. But with the Swift Blocker mini blocks, there's 75 in each of this little tray. So 75 times seven, well, 75 times two is 150 times two is 300. Okay, clearly my math is not great today. So 150, 300 plus 150, 450 plus 75. So 525 in this shelf here. And then I have three shelves. So that's pretty cool. And in there, my Cosmos, Zenius. I uh, I seeded them last last week, so this is a week's growth. Not bad. Probably ready to be um, hardened off next week. So there you go. Hope you found this video helpful. I hope I wasn't too rambly for you and that you actually learned something new or at least enjoy watching me play with dirt. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please feel free to do so. I try to show up here on YouTube every Thursday and I do enjoy creating content. Um, so yeah, hope to see you again next time. Bye!